Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we have a 2013 Honda Goldwing in the shop, and we're going to be dressing up the saddlebags with some lighted accents from add-on accessories. These lighted accents come in chrome or gloss black, and they really enhance the look of the 2012 to 2017 Goldwing. And best of all, they're easy to install. Here are the tools required to complete this installation. This video was sponsored by Add-on Accessories. Your kit comes with two lighted accent pieces, one for the left and one for the right saddlebag. Here, the gloss black is shown. On the back of each piece, you'll notice a lot of red tape. This is the backing tape that will be removed to reveal the double-sided adhesive. Included in your kit are four wire clips, four blade connectors, four quick splice terminals, two alcohol wipes, and four wire ties. Before we get started, let's make sure all of the lights are working properly. Here you can see the running light, the left turn signal is functioning, as is the right turn signal. Next, we're going to remove the rear fender, this black plastic piece, and we'll also be removing the tail light assembly. The rear fender is held in place with four 5mm socket bolts in these locations. Here I'll give you a close-up view. You have to kind of look up to see these bolts. They're sort of at an angle and they're in the corners kind of hidden, at least the two top ones are. And then if we come down to the bottom, you can see the they're on the outside corners of that rear fender. I'm using a 5mm Allen wrench to remove the top left bolt first. Then I'll remove the top right bolt. You may notice a loud pop when you first break these bolts loose. They can be kind of tight. All of these socket bolts are the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting them back in the correct position. To remove the rear fender, start at the bottom and begin pulling it straight out. There are a few little plastic clips up on that top edge that kind of snap into place into the saddlebag. So you just have to kind of work it out and those clips will come loose. You'll notice a wire connected to the fender. That's for your license plate light. And we're going to disconnect that by pressing down on this little tab where my thumb is and pulling it straight out and it comes right apart. If you look inside your saddlebag at the rear of the saddlebag, you'll see two 10 millimeter acorn nuts. And there's two of these on each side, inside each saddlebag. And these need to be removed so that we can remove the tail light, brake light, turn signal assembly. And I'm using a 10 millimeter socket uh, with a ratchet to break these loose. And then uh, you can usually just unscrew them by hand once they're loose. And while I'm only showing the right saddlebag in this video, you'll want to do the same thing on the left saddlebag as well. With the four nuts removed, you can now pull straight out on this taillight assembly. Now there are a couple of rubber grommets in the center section that are kind of holding it into place. You'll see those grommets here in a second. So here are the two rubber grommets. And then on the back of your tail light assembly, there are a couple of bosses that stick out and they kind of punch into those rubber grommets and hold it in place. Now there is still an electrical connector attached to this tail light assembly that we'll have to remove. You want to be careful and pay attention to these studs where we removed the nuts earlier because they can scratch the paint. So be very cautious uh, when you are working with this. And here is the connector that we need to release. You see a tab there on the very top toward the front of the bike. And all we're going to do is mash down on that tab and pull it away 
and it will release, just pull it toward the front of the bike and it will come right out. Now we're ready to attach the accent pieces to the saddlebag, but before we do, we need to make sure the surface is extremely clean and free of any contaminants or wax or any other surface protectants. Now, you can use the little alcohol pads that come with the kit. Uh, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol on a shop towel and thoroughly wipe down the entire area so that we get good adhesion from that double-sided tape. Now, this is one area you don't want to skimp on. Go ahead and make sure that surface is really clean. If you see any debris on your alcohol pad or on the shop towel in my case, go over it again with a fresh clean cloth and some alcohol just to make sure you get it clean. The top edge of the accent piece is going to follow this body line that's molded into your saddlebag. The bottom edge of the accent piece is going to follow this body line and then go up just above that black plastic part that's on the lower half of your saddlebag. Now, after you've removed all of the protective backing from the adhesive tape, you can begin at the very rear of the bike. This is where we want to start. Make sure you've lined it up to that, that molded body line that's in the saddlebag and start at the rear and work your way forward. Now, I don't press it down real tight at first, just in case you have to lift it off to reposition a little bit. But here you can see, and it kind of bends. This plastic accent piece will kind of wrap around the curvature of the saddlebag and just check it along the way. Once you feel comfortable with where it is and that it's in the correct place, then you can go ahead and press firmly to make sure it gets good adhesion. Also, make sure the wire is hanging down. Uh, it should be hanging in front of your muffler. Don't worry about that right now. We'll tuck that up here in just a little bit. And once I'm happy that this is in position, now I'm really going to start pressing to make sure that double-sided tape sticks to the plastic saddlebag painted surface. And you can't do this too much. You just want to make sure you get good adhesion all the way around, especially on that very front edge that wraps around the front of the saddlebag. So just keep pressing it into place and we'll come back and add some masking tape that we want to leave on for at least 24 hours. In fact, you really shouldn't even ride the bike for the first 24 hours after you've attached this. Now, on the right side, you can kind of see from the front of the bike how the uh, chrome piece wraps around, uh, how it kind of bends into place and wraps around that front edge of the saddlebag. And you just... Again, you want to just line everything up to that body line, and then once you are comfortable that it's in the correct position, you just want to firmly press everything into place. Now, you can also remove the saddlebag lids and apply this with the saddlebag lids off of the motorcycle. I just found it is easy to work with it uh, on the center stand with them on the bike. And once again, it's a good idea to put some masking tape. Uh, I'll actually add more than this, but we'll put several strips of masking tape down to make sure you can hold that piece in place until it has time to finally cure. If you look up under the back of the bike above the muffler, you'll see this flat little panel right here. We want to make sure to clean that really good with another alcohol wipe or some alcohol on a, on a shop towel because we're going to attach one of our wire clips right there. As you can see, I'm going to bring that wire up underneath the saddlebag and clip it right there. Now, those little aluminum tabs can be bent to hold the wire in place. Here, I've put another one of those clips on the kind of inside of the saddlebag, and I'm just going to mash that little clip down to hold it in place. And you'll want to repeat this on the other side as well. We're about to begin the wiring segment of the video. It's a good idea to disconnect the ground wire from your battery. You'll notice that each of the accent lights has three wires. The white wire is for the running light, the black wire is a ground, and the yellow wire is for the turn signal. 
We can combine the two running light wires and the two ground wires together, as I'm doing here with the running light wires, and twist them into a single wire so that they can share one blade connector. You'll do the same thing with the ground wires. Now you might need to strip back a little bit more of the wire uh, using a wire stripper. And then you simply attach this blade connector. And using a crimping tool, you'll squeeze down firmly on this to crimp those wires to that connector. And it's a good idea to give that connector a firm tug when you're finished just to make sure you got a good connection. Now we do the exact same thing with the two black ground wires. We've twisted them together, we've slipped the wires into one of the blade connectors, and using the crimping tool we're going to mash it down to make sure we have a good connection. Each of the turn signal wires, the yellow wires, get their own individual blade connectors as I'm doing here. Now we're ready to install the T-tap wire splice connectors into the motorcycle wiring harness. Now you'll see here how these actually splice into the existing wire and give us a place where we can put our connectors. Now you basically, I'm going to use a pair of pliers to kind of crimp these down tightly over that wire to make sure they get a good connection and then they actually cut into the insulation of the wire. Now we're going to add one of these to each of the wires there's four wires on the motorcycle. There's a left turn, a right turn, a ground, and a running light wire. And so we'll add each of these. This is the wiring harness that goes into the tail light assembly. And here you can see how those blade connectors just slip into place. You want to, of course, push them up very firmly to make sure they get a good connection. Okay, so here's what it looks like once I have all four of those T-taps in place and then have our wires connected uh, using the proper color codes that came in your kit. Here I'm using one of the cable ties included to kind of tie everything up into a bundle with an existing harness on the motorcycle just to get everything up and out of the way. We're about ready to begin reassembly, but I recommend before you reassemble the taillight assembly and the rear fender that you reattach the ground cable on your battery and test all the lights first to make sure they're working. Now we already did this and they do appear to be working fine. So now reconnect the connector on your taillight assembly and carefully insert it back into place. Now you'll notice these connectors that we've added to the wire harness are going to take up a little more space. So you have to kind of pay attention. You don't want to just shove this thing in there. You might actually disconnect one of those connectors. So take your time and make sure you can get all of those new little T-splice connectors and blade connectors to fit back in the area where that wire harness goes. It takes a little bit of fiddling to do this, but you will figure it out and get it done. Once you have that taillight assembly back into position, it's not a bad idea to turn the bike on again, check all the lights, make sure that putting the taillight assembly back in didn't accidentally pull one of those connectors loose. This actually happened to me because I had not... Uh, properly put one of those blade connectors firmly into the T-splice connector and it actually fell out. So I had to remove the tail light and reinstall it. So make sure you check everything before you put everything back on. Now we can attach those small chrome accent pieces to the very front of the saddlebag, making sure they line up good with the other chrome accent piece we added to the saddlebag door. And here you can see it kind of completes the look. It just looks like it wraps all the way around that saddlebag all the way to the back. 